Coming up next on The Sheila Smoot Show. If you used to rent from Movie Gallery, why you might find collection activity on your credit report. Why would you want to pay something you don't owe? That's just blackmail. Then, dollar store deals. Are you really saving on those spices and shampoos? Find out in this episode's Your Money Report. The main focus is to recruit that next generation of skilled workers into the industry. How to get the training you need to learn and earn more. Full details in our Go Build Alabama report. The Sheila Smoot Show starts right now. Glad to have you along with us today. I'm so excited at the opportunity to once again help consumers and help our community. Now I want to spend just a few moments telling you about our new show and what we hope to accomplish. It's hard to believe, but it's been over a decade since I first took on the role of consumer advocate. One of my first reports, as you remember, focused on a troubled Birmingham, Alabama cemetery called Shadowlaw Memorial Gardens. You may remember the terrible conditions there, empty graves, and even remains scattered across the grounds. I work closely with experts and lawmakers to change the way Alabama cemeteries are regulated. Today, Chatelon is a totally different place. You'll find volunteers on site, dedicated to protecting the memory of those buried in this historic cemetery. I'm proud of what we accomplished back then, and I'm looking forward to working for you once again. Each week, we're gonna have a variety of information that I hope you'll find interesting, and also engaging and also something that can help you. So let's get started. First up, competition from services like Netflix and Redbox have put most video stores out of business. Big chains like Hollywood Video and Movie Gallery vanished months ago. Even though both of them are out of business, many former customers are getting calls from a collection agency. They're being accused of owing late fees or being charged for unreturned movies. Even if you never had a late fee or returned your movies on time, old records could be putting your good name at risk. This nationwide credit case in today's Your Side Consumer Alert. You won't find the latest release on the shelves. You won't find any money in the cash register. Movie gallery and Hollywood video stores like this one have been closed for months, bankrupt and out of business. But that hasn't stopped one collection agency from trying to come after you. A collection firm bought movie gallery's old records and Birmingham attorney John Watts says many Alabama consumers are shocked to find a collection account on their credit report. We're getting a lot of calls from folks that uh, typically do not have any problems with their credit reports and then all of a sudden maybe they've been turned down for uh, credit or their insurance rates go up. The collection firm is National Credit Solutions based in Oklahoma. When Movie Gallery closed its doors, NCS took control of the company's former accounts. They immediately began reporting those old records to all three credit bureaus. It's that practice that got the attention of the Montana Attorney General's office who recently sued NCS accusing the firm of, quote, issuing adverse reports to credit bureaus based on alleged debts, which caused substantial harm. People see this on their credit reports, they pick up the phone and call the collection agency, and the collection agency will say, tell you what, prove to me that you were never late. Well, that's hard to get since many former movie gallery locations are now new businesses. The stores that are left are being broke down and hauled away, and Hollywood video stores They've been closed for years. Here at home, the Watts Law Firm is closely watching this case. All of a sudden you have this on your credit report and the collection agency will make it sound like the only way to get it off is to pay the money. Watts says if you happen to owe the bill, pay it. If you don't, fight it. If you realize you don't owe it, then tell them, I don't owe this debt, I want it off my credit report. After Montana sued, National Credit Solutions withdrew its collection efforts, but at least five other states have also filed lawsuits. NCS seems surprised at the negative reaction from consumers, telling reporters the company abides by all laws. Even so, the Better Business Bureau revoked the firm's accreditation due to activities that reflected poorly on the Bureau. Since many consumers don't know how to handle something like this, we're going to explore this case a bit further. Coming up, we go in depth with consumer attorney John Watts. 
He'll tell you and tell us how to get something like this off your credit report. But I don't owe this debt. I don't know what this is for. I want you to get this off my credit report. And row after row, aisle after aisle, all packed with products that only cost a dollar. Dollar store deals and duds. What you need to know before filling up your cart. Then, our special look at the Go Build program. They're going to see lots of opportunity open up in the next several years. The Sheila Smoot Show continues in a moment. This portion of the Sheila Smoot Show is brought to you by Atmosphere Home Essentials, your source for modern and contemporary furniture. Welcome back in. Our first segment, we told you how many former customers of Movie Gallery are just shocked to find collection activity on their credit reports, supposedly for late fees and rentals that were never returned. I recently had a chance to sit down with consumer attorney John Watts and explore how a bankrupt business has the potential to ruin your credit score. John, thank you so much for being here today. It's, it's been something. These things come in the mail, people call, they want to collect, and now they're talking about collecting for movies. Movie galleries out of business. How can they possibly do this? Well, these collection agencies claim to now own the debt, mm -hmm. and so they're particularly putting this stuff on our credit reports, right. saying we owe $70 or $90. Usually it's under $100. Mm -hmm. and you know, when we go to uh, buy something on credit right. or we're applying for a job or an apartment, that can really hurt us because that collection account will drive our score down. Mm -hmm. You know, and $100 makes all the difference when you're, you're, you're getting all kinds of things. And folks really do use that against you. And can they use that against you? Say, well, it's only a dollar that's on there and the movie gallery is only coming after me for $25. I'm going to blow it off. But you really shouldn't, right? Right, and part of what they want you to do is say, well, the, the easiest thing is just to pay this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll just write a check for $50 or $75. And, but the problem is if you don't owe it and they've damaged your credit mm -hmm. score, then that, that's wrong for them to do that. Right. Now, what is it that you can do as an attorney? How can folks contact you in regard to that? Do you have any jurisdiction to help folks who are in desperate need of making at least this company go away? Sure. The, the easiest thing for people to do is when you find out that this is on your credit report, and, and first of all, you have to pull your credit reports okay. to make sure. So that's and we it. will help you with that. <laughs> that's right. It's Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. Mm -hmm. And so pull those credit reports. You see that on there. Then we suggest writing letters. Mm -hmm. Write letters to the credit bureaus. Write letters to whoever the collection agency is and say, hey, I don't owe this debt, unless you know you do. If you know you do, right. then pay it. You know, pay it. But, but I don't owe this debt. I don't know what this is for. I want you to get this off my credit report. Mm -hmm. And then in about 30 to 45 days, you'll get a response back. Now, one thing I do want to mention, we always advise to do it certified mail, mm -hmm. return receipt requested, so you get the little green card back. Because otherwise, sometimes these companies will say, oh, we didn't get your mail. Right. If you get on sign the green card, they can't say that. That they didn't get it. So the bottom line is to do what? If you get this correspondence from NCS, the movie gallery, what's the, and you do not owe it, don't pay it, correct? Right. Well, I, I, my suggestion is don't pay it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't owe it, why, why would you want to pay something you don't right. owe? That's just blackmail. Quickly, last question. If they continue to harass uh, folks about this, debt, what can they do at this point? They disputed it already, they said they don't owe it, but this guy won't go away. If you don't owe it and they won't get off your credit report or they keep calling or writing, then ultimately you can sue them. There's some federal laws that apply and that tends to encourage them to leave you alone and to get it off your credit report. All right, very good. Thank you so much. Great advice and thank you for being on our Consumer thank Squad you. and we know we're going to hear from you. You're going to be one of my most popular guests. I assure <laughs> you that's going to be the case. Thank you so much, John. Just ahead in your money report, dollar store deals and duds. And later on, too many jobs, not enough workers. See why skilled tradesmen are in high demand even in a down economy. The Sheila Smoot Show continues in a moment.
Got a question? Give me a call on my tip line at 378-TIPS. That's 378-8477. These days, everyone is looking for ways to save, and that's making dollar stores more popular than ever. At a dollar each, I know I like to pick up things like wine glasses and sports drinks, but how do you know if you're really saving money? Those bucks add up, and your trip to the checkout may be costing you more than you realize. Here in the C Block, we go shopping and find out if it's a dollar store deal or just a dud. Row after row, aisle after aisle, dollar stores are filled with products that just cost a buck. In today's tough times, you'll find these retailers are still doing a brisk business. From snacks to shampoo, consumers are packing their carts what they think are a bargain. But not every item in the store is such a great deal. First up, household cleaners. You probably won't find any name brands, but many of the active ingredients are about the same. We bought a bottle of glass cleaner for 99 cents. Brand names like Windex are all over $4. They may be more diluted, but they work about the same. So, household cleaners, a deal. Next, vitamins. Consumer Reports did a recent study and found many dollar store brands have less vitamins in the bottle than what's on the label. Also, many of the products they tested didn't dissolve properly. So in this case, we call vitamins a dud. Hair salons would like for you to buy their pricey shampoos, but you won't find any $20 conditioners here. But you may find discontinued name brands that are a deal. Toothpaste runs out, especially when you leave the top off. Replacing it at a dollar store may seem like a good idea, but remember, a few years ago, toothpaste imported from China were found to contain the same poisonous chemical used in antifreeze. We're going to call toothpaste a dud. Foods can be a hit or miss, but there's one real winner here, spices. They can cost four times as much in a grocery store. So from pepper to paprika, these spices are considered a deal. And finally, batteries. With all the electronics in our homes, it seems you never have enough to go around. Grabbing a pack from the dollar store gets you carbon zinc batteries. They don't last very long and they are pretty sensitive to heat and cold. So you won't get much of a charge from this dollar store dud. A few final deals. Kitchen utensils, things like pizza cutters and potato pillars work just fine and cost a lot less. And I like party goods. Things like gift wrapped and gift bags are a great way to celebrate on a budget. Remember, it's just going to be torn open and thrown away, so why spend three times more on the gift wrap? A fun story. Now here's what's coming up after the break. From road construction to commercial contracts, it takes skilled workers to build Alabama. Next, see how learning a skill can be your chance to build a better life. The Sheila Smoot Show continues in a moment. This segment of the Sheila Smoot Show is brought to you by Go Build Alabama. Train for your construction job at GoBuildAlabama.com. Welcome back. Hard to believe, but in today's tough times, there's a looming shortage of skilled construction workers. These well-paying jobs are going unfilled all across Alabama. But that's a trend a program launched last fall hopes to change. It's Go Build Alabama, and in the coming weeks, we're going to learn a lot more about the red flag being raised by the program. The skyline of Birmingham is changing. Cranes swing across the new children's hospital being constructed in the medical district. Every day, dozens of skilled tradesmen converge on the job site, bringing the hospital a little closer to completion. But there's trouble looming on the horizon. A crippling shortage of skilled workers could one day slow projects like this one down to a crawl. Workers with vital skills are retiring. For every fresh-faced trainee that arrives to work, four experienced experts have left that field. 2.2 million people have left the industry, and yet, construction activity is going to keep expanding and I think that uh, in particularly in non-residential construction where the higher skilled work is required that's where the shortages are going to be most acute. As our overused infrastructure cracks and ages there may be no one left with the know-how to fix it. 
That's where a program called Go Build Alabama comes in. Go Build Alabama is a campaign that was started by the, the commercial and industrial construction industry. And the, the main focus is to recruit that next generation of skilled craft workers into the industry. This change in the workforce and the upcoming economic recovery represents a real opportunity for young men and women. A recent Gallup Youth Survey finds professions like teacher, doctor, and lawyer in the top 10. Architects and engineers did show up as favorites, but no other construction jobs made it to the list. Professions like steel worker or brick mason were left out, and program coordinators say that can be traced back to perception and awareness. I think construction has a reputation uh, of being uh, nothing but uh, dirty, low-skilled work, and uh, that's a perception that I think is out of date. First of all, uh, more and more construction work requires real knowledge of uh, math, of uh, computer skills, and uh, of technology that is very cutting edge. The construction industry uh, has really done a great job of coming up with new kinds of technology that mean that uh, operating equipment or locating uh, materials, uh, putting them into place, uh, really requires skills that are quite different from what most people may be perceiving based on how construction was done 30 or 40 years ago. We really have to go and start from the basics and really tell them what our industry is, you know, what, what you know, co commercial industrial construction is, you know, how it's different from residential, and, and then talk about those opportunities that are out there for them. Many college graduates are finding it difficult to land a job. The unemployment rate for people aged 20 to 24 is almost 16 percent. Now that so many people have left and yet construction activity is beginning to pick up, I think the odds of getting a job once you get through your training and staying employed one project after another have gotten a lot better than they were three years ago. Workers trained in commercial construction trades earn about $914 per week. The average weekly pay for most Americans is just $608. Without going for an advanced degree, uh, the kind of uh, skills that you can develop in construction relatively quickly put you at a much higher pay scale than somebody who's starting out uh, working in, in a retail job or other kinds of service jobs. That, uh, construction uh, has high beginning pay, it has a lot of opportunity for overtime and a uh, good chance of advancement if you keep working at developing your skills. Skilled trades like electrician, carpentry, and plumbing offer opportunities for advancement and even the chance to own your own business. If you enter into this industry, you know, you'll have opportunities to earn a living wage, have, have better than average pay, and be able to have, you know, self-sustaining wages. Great opportunities to, to eventually in the future go on and own your own business. We use the learn a skill, master a trade slogan a lot, but it really opens up a door to uh, a future for someone that's willing to get into this industry. No doubt tomorrow's new generation of skilled workers will have big shoes to fill, but Go Build Alabama is raising the red flag today for our future tomorrow. You can learn more about the looming shortage of skilled workers by visiting GoBuildAlabama.com. This program is a real chance for young people and displaced workers to build a better future. In the coming weeks, we'll keep you informed on opportunities. That's going to help you to learn a skill train and earn more money. That's good, huh? In the process. Need help? Find experts with the answers at SmoochShow.com. The Sheila Smoot Show continues in a moment. Next week on The Sheila Smoot Show, blocks of homes empty and abandoned, foreclosed and forgotten. Mortgage fraud is still hurting home buyers. What do you need to know before trying to buy? That's next week on The Sheila Smoot Show. We got a lot of information today, folks. First, don't let collection agencies push you around. If they do, you know where to go for help. Second, we showed you how to go out and shop on a dollar budget. So go out today and get that deal. And finally, you know what? If you need a construction job, there's plenty out there. Go buildalabama.com. It's been good talking to you today, and remember folks, 
I'm always listening to your side. We'll see you next week.